Hi, Alex. How are you? Hi, Alexandra. How are you? <laughs> I'm very good. <laughs> <laughs> This is one of your two accents, right? <laughs> What? This is one of your two accents, right? Yeah, I, I, sometimes it's the French one, otherwise Portuguese. I don't know how to say in Romanian, Alexandra, something like that. Alexandra. Okay, Alexandra. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much for being with me today. Um, it's a pleasure. I couldn't wait to for us to have this conversation because I think it covers a lot of subjects that... Um, a lot of people in my audience are, have been asking about for quite a long time. So before we get going, can you tell us a bit about yourself and how you got into Web3? Absolutely. So yeah, first of all, it's my pleasure to be here. Um, I, think, uh, I think this is going to be a cool conversation and uh, you're a cool person. I think I am too. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> good ingredients, right? Yeah, about myself um, and how I got into Web3. Um, I'm an engineer, uh, but I've always liked um, other stuff. So I've worked in pretty much industries that have nothing to do with not only Web3, but engineering as a whole. Uh, but then um, I got to to buy crypto like pretty early without really knowing what, what it was, what was the meaning, just thinking it was cool, uh, the concept. And, and then a great friend of mine um, from a long time invited me to, to come to this company called Masterbox, which is this one. <laughs> and, he, and yeah, and he, he invited me, he said uh, could be a good match. And, and I mean, it's been a fantastic journey with him. So it was, it was more of an invitation from somebody that I really trusted, whether than really like like really wanting to go into Web3, you know? But now I'm glad I, I did. I think there are quite a lot of people that have been telling me that they started the journey, including me, with like scammy projects. I'm very happy that you had like a smoother experience, let's say, um, uh, getting into yeah. it. So yeah, what does Masterblocks do? Yeah, so Masterblocks, uh, we started uh, about two years and a half ago. I was not at the company at the time. But uh, we were really a crypto marketing agency, providing all the marketing uh, services in Web3 that you can imagine. And we specialized on something that is pretty unique called organic growth hacking. I can talk a bit more about that later on. And that technique, uh, the organic growth hacking, really made us famous in the space, at least in Europe. And so after that, like big companies that we were working with, with that marketing technique, asked us for other kind of services. And, and that's how our, our acceleration program started about uh, a year ago now. And, uh, and now we're going to be also a, a VC. So, I mean, it, it's all going very fast, uh, but we need to remember that it's all because of our good work with the, with the growth hacking. How did you guys find your niche? So um, many companies were providing uh, marketing services. Still many do, right? Uh, but we, we understood, um, Carlos, my founder, understood at the time that we really needed to do something special, something unique to, to stand out. And we understood um, also that the, there was this huge problem with growth hacking caused by bots and by fake followers. And, and so it was not, it was super artificial and, uh, and obviously could be taken down, you know, because it's, it's against the, the, the rules of many, many apps, many infrastructures. And so we decided to, to create this organic growth hacking. Uh, and, and yeah, and the word really says it all. It's organic. So there's no bots involved. It's all real people. It's all real comments, real communities. And uh, so, yeah, that's it. We, we really tried to find something that would stand out, that would be different, unique. Uh, and we got very good at it. So, yeah, that's how it happened. So what kind of companies do you guys work with? Sure. So, um, so I mean, when we started, it was all uh, companies that needed marketing services. We kind of covered every company you can imagine. Uh, 
Uh, right now, we are more selective depending on the department we're working inside Masterlot. So the lab's services, which is the marketing, the growth hacking, we provide it to pretty much everybody. Um, doesn't really care. It can be, I don't know, NFTs, metaverse, gaming, um, infra, a- any project protocols can be anything. It really works good. Uh, about the acceleration, um, now we're really more looking into uh, hard tech stuff, um, stuff, as they say, that will take blockchain uh, forward. Um, obviously, we, al- we already accelerated projects also related to uh, NFTs, even some um, we sports with Web3. Um, but our core, uh, our target, I mean, in the acceleration is, is more like hard tech infrastructure projects. Yeah. Um, so one of the, one of the things you mentioned to me is that organic growth became very popular about, uh, amongst web three companies. Why do you think it's such a big push towards this while web two companies still rely heavily on advertising? Yes, uh, I mean, doing one, doing one of those doesn't really, uh, um, like, you can do both. Uh, and, and honestly, our technique could even help Web2 companies. We, we have already had, like, some little tests to see if this could work with Web2 companies or with just, instead of KOLs in Web3, just influencers in Web2. So I think that um, at the end of the day, it's just understanding exactly what the company wants to do and then see if our technique really is going to help the company to go forward. Because as you said, some companies, they do extremely well with advertising. And uh, one of our best partners in Portugal, they are leaders in, um, in uh, advertising, in betting sites and casinos in, uh, in Europe and in Brazil. So we know exactly how it goes. It's extremely successful if it's done properly. Uh, but I think that in many cases, the, the combination of that with something close to what we do can also be very, very good. Um, so what other trends have you noticed when it comes to the user acquisition metrics? Tactics. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> metrics <So>. and tactics. <laughs> okay. So, um, I mean, the user, it's kind of a complex subject uh, because it's going to depend, first of all, on what the, where the company is, um, is incorporated. And with this, I'm not just talking about the, the category they, they are in. Uh, it has also to do with their audience uh, because the way of um, trying to create communities, trying to get traction and engagement and and more users, it's completely different to do it like in Southeast Asia or in Turkey or in Latam or in Europe. It's really different because the target um, is as not like is not really going to think the same way. Um, the the vibe also is different. So um, it's really going to depend on many different uh, things. So the where the market you're in. Uh, then what are you really trying to, to do? If it's a game, you need real users to get into your platform, uh, as you know, obviously, <laughs> uh, we discussed in the past. And, uh, and so the, I would say that it's going to depend on many things. And the, the, the most important is that you know exactly where you're integrated, the, the, the place you're trying to do the business, what is your target, what is also the, the, the way to be successful uh, in, that, uh, in that part of the world, let's say. But so, yeah, just to, 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 for this resume, I would say that it's really important first to understand where you're uh, established, where you're, what, what's around you to operate better. Do you think kind of like, um, like if you have like competitors in the space, that would be a driver into like how things should be done, especially at the beginning or like what approaches one should be taking? Sure, sure. That That's also very important. And uh, there's this saying, right? Seconds do it better or seconds try harder. 
So if you if you're uh, integrated in a, in an environment where there is already a huge competitor, somebody that is on top of you, they started earlier. They have more users. They have more fans. They have a bigger community. The product is is better or at a later stage in the in the development. There is so obviously it's a problem because you're you're trying to to rival with these guys, but at the same time it's also an opportunity because. Uh, you are like on the side looking exactly at what this competitor is doing. And so you can see what are the things that are working and what are the mistakes that th this company is doing. So it's really like, it's just like following a car on the road and you see where like even in the car, if the car in front of you is, is bigger or faster, uh, is going to hit some, some holes in the street, is going to maybe not slow down where you should slow down. And so being second can also be uh, something very good if you, if you know how to take it like positively, you know? Um, I do agree with that. Um, and I know that's something you told me and I found very interesting is that organic growth helped you understand if the project is a scam or not. I think a lot of people have been asking themselves this. Can you tell yeah. us more about it? How do you define a scammy project, first of all? Because I think that's very important to kind of start from the basics. And what yes. are some important traits you're looking uh, when making this decision? Yes. So uh, at Masterblocks, we have this uh, philosophy where everything is a scam until it's not. It's, it's just like the same thing when you, when you have a trial, but it's the opposite. Uh, where you're you're not guilty until you are, uh, and so for us everything. When I say that everything is a scam, sometimes it's not that it's a real scam. It's just that maybe it's not a good project, uh, doesn't have capacity to grow, or the people that are doing the project already failed miserably on in other projects, or they didn't like use the, their their uh, their funding properly. So I mean. The words scam and scammer and scammy are big words for us at Masterblocks because it doesn't really just mean scam. But if we just talk about the scam uh, as you know it, uh, our technique, uh, as you said, is really, really important to, 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 to better understand uh, if a project is scammy or not. Why? Because the um, a scammy project, uh, even the best ones, and I've seen very good scammy projects, unfortunately, because they 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 can take a lot of funding uh, and they can really because they are good at scamming. It's just like good people robbing houses. They if they are good at it, they are still going to be successful, uh, even though it's illegal, even though they shouldn't be doing it. So. Scammy projects, one of the first things you're, you're going to try to look into. Uh, obviously, you try to look into, into the team, first of all. Uh, who's the team? Who's behind them? Then the second thing is the partners. And this is very important because if you see partners that are already scammy, like you already did your DD on them, you know they're scams. If they are associated with this project, uh, if it's just one, okay, like it's fine, but if there are many, you already know that like it's pretty much a, a scam just because of the partners. Then uh, you look into the, the what they are trying to do, what's the technology, uh, and you're going to see that scammy projects usually have good ideas, uh, so things that could be very interesting, but are uh, two options. First one, impossible to do. It's something that we, like in 2023, still don't know how to do. Or second option, in order to do it, they would have to secure millions and millions. And they are never going to secure that money. So they're never going to build the tech in order to achieve the goal that they are trying to sell. So, uh, yeah. And then comes the last part, which has a lot to do with what we sell with the, with the growth hacking. It has to do with the communities. Because we talk with VCs and, and angel investors every day because of our accelerator, you know, trying to connect good projects with, with, the, with the funding. Um, and one of the things they, they love to do is just check the community. So 
if it's a game, for instance, they are going to check if there are real users, if there's really fans behind the game, if there's people really involved on trying to know what's the next map like coming out, what's the next, um, I don't know, functionality in the game coming out. And so you, you check the community, like on the web free socials, on Discord, on, on, on Telegram, on Twitter, and you're going very well. Now it's very easy for me, but if you, if you start to dig a bit, you're going to find it very easily in a, in a short period of time. You clearly see when there's bots, uh, comments saying, uh, let's fucking go to the moon, uh, just MOVs with, uh, with rocket ships and, I mean, that's like, if you're a fan of, of a game, you're not going to tweet that, right? You're going to tweet, hey, Alexandra, um, I'm uh, having a lot of um, fun times playing, uh, playing the map called uh, Desert, blah, blah. Uh, but I would love to see a new map with snow. I don't know. Or I, I, I just love this new sword, but every time I go, I, I try to kill a guy on the left it bugs. Could you like change this? This is a real community. This is really people that tried the game. It's real humans. Uh, and so having this type of community really shows you that, yeah, there's a community and having bots just tweeting, let's go to the moon. I mean, best game ever. Let's go. Like, no, that's not a real community. And so you want to look at that when you're trying to see if it's a scam or not. Um, something you mentioned was regarding, um, people and the team behind a project, uh, besides everything else and a debate that I've seen for quite a long time, actually, uh, was regarding, um, docs or not docs teams. What do you think? Does this grow the transparency and trust in this project? And one of the reasons why I'm asking you this is because I've also debated this in like one of my one of my episodes with some of my speakers, because you know everybody just wants uh, to be anonymous and but build trust at the same time, which is a bit hard, let's say. But at the same time, I think the most successful projects, even in Web three, were the ones that had a um, a central figure. If it, it doesn't really matter exactly who, like what who's the person there. If it's like a marketing manager, if it's a CEO, if it's a partnership manager, whatever. Um, as long as there's this central figure that they can kind of relate the project uh, to and kind of believe that it's not something that is going to take their money and like run with it. Like, what's your yeah. take on this? So, uh, first of all, I understand why it's such a complex topic and why people have different views. Because if we look at the genesis of Web3, uh, so imagine it's Bitcoin, just look at the founder of Bitcoin. Nobody knows who it is, if it's a person, if it's a group of people. Um, and Bitcoin is probably the most important thing in Web3. So, uh, so the start of Web3 is somebody or a group of people that nobody knows who it is, you know? You know this person exists or this group of people existed. There's a white paper, there's transactions you can go in and you can check that, but nobody knows who it is. So, I mean, the, the, the foundation of the whole web free um, ecosystem is based on somebody or a group of people that nobody knows who it is. But maybe, thankfully, because otherwise it could be like this could turn against us, right? So, so having this, uh, having this intro, my view is, is really, really web to on this. Uh, we and Masterbox same. We really want to do the things the most transparent there is. So, uh, I love to know the person behind the project. I love to know the, the story behind, the storytelling, what they did before, uh, what they want to do in the future, where do they come from, what's their background, everything. I, I'm a huge, huge fan of being transparent. But I understand the, the, the people that say, no, it's web free, we can be anonymous and still, and still believe in, in everybody. And we can make it happen and just look at like the ZK technology, which like is obviously very complex, but at the end, it's just like me being sure of a transaction 
and you being sure of that same transaction without us really giving personal information about each other. So again, it's a complex, um, it's a very complex topic, uh, but my vision and the vision at Masterbox is to do it very transparent and knowing the person behind. Fair. Like I'm, I'm actually a huge fan of that. Like no matter what, like, um, what anybody says, but I, I know it's a, it's a very debated topic and everybody has like very different opinions about it. Um, sure. I'm sure you guys have like a ton of examples um, of campaigns that you have worked on. And I wanted to ask you if you can give us an ex some examples um, and what did you do for them? Because I think it's very important for us to explain in this episode, like how do you guys work or like how could any company or like marketing manager benefit most from what you do? Sure. So, um, so again, and as I, as I said, the, uh, the the most important thing before really starting a, a project and helping the project we need to really like dd the project up like 200 percent to know exactly what they do what they are trying to do what they already did what's the next steps to accomplish the the ultimate goal the first goal the second goal uh because uh understanding this will also help us a lot in our in our work and the the one of the most important things in when you are trying to get um communities more more followers more fans more like just trying to get more people um into to be in in touch with your project it's it's a very uh fragile and complicated process right so if you want to do it right you need to you need to have have right many different subcategories And so the thing that we really try to do first is just understand the overall project. Then when we understand the overall project, we want to see exactly what's the objective. If the objective is uh, getting more people uh, to, because we have many different approaches and because we've, de we've been doing growth hacking for more than two years now, the, the, we can really put a, a, a tailor-made job for each each and every project. So imagine I can give you some examples. Uh, we had this um, this game uh, that really wanted to, to, to be more famous, to have, uh, to have more users, to have more people uh, um, connected with, with their community, uh, to grow like the, the people behind the game. Uh, and, and so they, they asked us what would be like the, the, the best way to do it. And uh, we told them that uh, the game that they were trying to launch was a game that was good, uh, but also, and most importantly, there would be a, a certain target. And they, we still had to understand what was their, that target. And we understood that the target was Southeast Asia, because in Southeast Asia, Philippines, Vietnam, they are big gamers there. And so we understood that if we really wanted to maximize the, 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 like the, our, our services, we would have to go into that direction. So what we did was pretty much a full strategy on Southeast Asia. So we tried to see what, was, what were the, the hot topics there. Then uh, we tweeted or on Discord or, or Telegram, we went into groups that had people from those countries uh, and we really tried to talk a language they understood, in English, obviously, not in Vietnamese, but a language they understood, you mean, you know, in terms of uh, yeah. the, the... So, and we did that. It was a huge success uh, because, exactly because we, we understood that that would be the best way to, to just get a lot of people interested in the game because they are usually interested in it, right? Then, I mean, the, the, the other example I can give, something that has absolutely nothing to do, um, we helped on the Growth Hacking uh, an NFT project that is trying uh, to sell, um, trying and selling uh, um, watch NFTs. And these watch NFTs, they have a real utility because every time you buy an NFT, the NFT can be, uh, the, every NFT is a part of the watch. So it can be 
the dial of the watch. It can be the bracelet. It can be the movement. It can be the, the second hands. It can be so the, the, the people getting like the, the NFTs really saw that when they were getting the NFT, they were getting something from a real watch. And then obviously, if you got all the NFTs, you got the real watch. They would ship the watch to you. And here it was a complete uh, different approach because we had to understand who was our target. So obviously this was luxury watches, so it's something expensive. So first of all, we want to talk with to people that have money. Second of all, this is something related to watches. Uh, and this is also something related to, uh, to web free. So yes, we want to hit people that like watches, but also people that understand web free, because for instance, my dad, he loves watches, but he doesn't understand Web3 uh, so well. So if I tell him, look, I know you love watches, get this NFT of a watch. He's going to be like, I mean, it's cool, but why should I get an What is an NFT like? So, yeah, so we needed somebody that would like the watch and would under, understand what an NFT was. So it was a complex job, but at the end, it was a huge success. We had probably our best run in terms of uh, accounts reached, like on Twitter. We got 2.3 million accounts reached in a single month just from our organic shilling. Yeah. So, yeah, it was obviously we over delivered by quite a, quite a mile. Um, but yeah, it was again super, super different. Uh, so, I mean, the ultimate thing is to understand, really do a consultancy work. And, and our, uh, our organic growth hacking at the end of the month, every client, they get a report at the end of the, of the month with all, obviously all the analytics of everything that happened, what were the best tweets, what were the, the tweets that didn't work uh, so well. And then at the end of the report, we have something that is very cool because it's just like some McKinsey or BCG work. We have a full, uh, full last slide where it's just recommendations from our growth hacking uh, um, experts on what should be the next steps in order to achieve even better results. And this is completely game changer. I've never seen this in, the, in this industry because this is just, it's highly, uh, highly good consultancy work put into Web3, you know? And that's why clients, they stick with us for a long time. It's because our approach is very professional and has a, a lot to do with the, the, the ordinary Web2 consultancy world, you know? So, yeah. I think, I think something very important to ask you is like, do they use um, your services mostly to like for community growth, for launches, for campaigns, or it's a combo of everything? It's, it, it, it depends. Uh, I mean, obviously, when you are trying to launch a product, it's the best time to use our services. Uh, it's really going to make a huge difference, uh, even against competitors, because if you have, uh, like, very quickly, uh, 100 real accounts, just, like, tweeting real human stuff, um, complex um, comments that really... Uh, show you that there's people that care about the, the what you're doing. It's completely different than the competitor that is just putting a tweet saying our official launch is in 48 hours. Amazing guys come like, so we really accelerate growth and we really accelerate uh, community creation. So, I mean, it, obviously what we, what we tell projects is, uh, Based on what they do, based on the market conditions, there's uh, there's good ways to operate, and there's even better ways to operate. So some of the projects we're gonna tell them, guys, I think that our services are really going to change the world, but the, just at the launch time. And then there are other projects where we say, guys, maybe you need our services for more than just uh, the launch of tokens or whatever because uh because there's this reason and this reason and and for those reasons maybe you should stick with us for for a longer period of time so it really depends um so a year ago you guys launched an accelerator program why did you make the decision and who is it for yes so 
uh, the decision was we were kind of obligated to do it because at the time uh, we were just providing the, the, the marketing services with obviously the growth hacking as uh, our creme de la creme. Sorry for the French expression. <laughs> I think everybody <laughs> understands. Uh, so yeah, and at the time we were, um, so this was exactly a year ago, Web Summit Week in Lisbon. And we were, uh, we were, and we are very good partners with, uh, with BNB and Binance and Binance Institutional. And BNB chain at the time, they, they wanted to launch uh, their European acceleration. And by European acceleration, they wanted us to gather uh, the best projects in Europe that we knew. Uh, and then uh, they would invest in some of them. And they ended up investing in, in five or six, I don't remember. And we presented them like 50. Uh, and so what we did there had really nothing to do with, with uh, marketing or growth hacking. Or they just trusted us because of our uh, good work with the, with the growth hacking. Then obviously they knew us as individuals. They knew that we, we had capacity, we had uh, quality to, to, to do this kind of, uh, of job. And so suddenly we, we had to do it because we, we really liked them. They trusted us. So yeah, we, we did a very good job. They were very happy with that. And then we, we understood, guys, we're, we're good at this, you know, so maybe we should launch our own acceleration. And thankfully, it has been a great success. And that's why now we're, we're going to launch the, the VC. Um, but about the, the acceleration, what are uh, our, our targets? We, we, so obviously, every accelerator will tell you, yes, we want good projects. Congratulations. Everybody wants good projects, like everybody wants a good house, a good car, a good girlfriend. Amazing. But when we say we want good projects, it means that we want good persons behind the project. So obviously the, the, the technology or whatever they are trying to do or build is very important. We're going to DD on that extremely like with passion to really see if, if it's good or not, if we believe in the, in the project, in the product or not. But then uh, the most important thing is the person behind because Having a great, and we've seen that in the past also, great projects, great product, but the, the, the people behind didn't have the will to do the extra mile. They didn't want to work hard and fast. They were just like sitting on, on a great product, but they were not really like pushing it forward. And, and, and we told them that we worked with them for a couple of months and we told them, guys, your project, your product is amazing. There's a lot of, like capacity to grow there's many people interested already and there will be even more in the future but if you guys don't have this will as we do at master blocks to really do the extra mile push to the limits i mean there's not really synergies between us so i think that probably you're going to be successful but uh but not with us because with us it has to go strong and fast and and we we can't like just sleep on on the success of the project being good, you know, so so we want good projects, but more, most importantly, we want good uh, good people behind them. Um, so very soon, um, or very recently, um, or no, very very soon actually, um, you guys will become a VC, and I think it kind of like. Um, um, gels everything together with what we have been talking so far um so, and your goal is to reach 10 million dollars and invest in top quality projects mm -hmm. and what are the next sexy stuff in web3 what is the next cutting edge tech in web3 based on what you know uh, investors are looking for um and at the end of the day what will you be looking to um to invest into yes so uh, the, the capital uh, topic is, the, is obviously the sexiest topic, but it's also the most complex and the, ones that, and the one that comes with most responsibility because now we are, uh, it's not a game anymore. Now it's a real, you know, it's a real VC. And I think it's also the, the time where we're not web free anymore because uh, we're going to be, obviously we're web free. We just invest in web free projects, but now we need to have uh, the web to, 
VC standards in terms of uh, being professional, in terms of uh, knowing exactly what we're doing with people's money. So it's a big responsibility. I know we can do it. I know we will do it, obviously, but I think we will learn a lot uh, by doing it because now uh, from those $10 million we are uh, trying to uh, to reach, uh, there's going to be obviously people that uh, know us for, for a long time. So they, they don't really, they are not like thinking, uh, okay, what are they going to do? Because they know we're going to make it happen. They're going to, to get more money at the end of the day. Uh, but then f- we're also going to get funding from people that don't really know us that well. People, even people that really never really like invested in Web3, they are completely Web2 web natives. Uh, j- they just know that, yeah, we've been like going well and hard in, in, the, in the last uh, two years. But uh, I mean, they don't really know us like so. We, we need to understand uh, the, the, where we are going to be incorporated, which is uh, it's the next level. Uh, and also us master blocks with our philosophy of having everything is a scam until it's not. Now comes the part where uh, if we invest in a project, they're going to be like, okay, so if you invest in this, for sure it's not a scam. And imagine we miss, which I hope we don't, <laughs> eating wood. Uh, but imagine we miss, they're going to be like, okay, the guys that are the best at identifying scams, they invest in a project that at the end of the day was maybe a bit scammy. Maybe they didn't do the DD properly. And so I'm sure this is not going to happen, but we really need to, to when we are discussing internally, you know, we really need to put this on the table. We need to... To talk about this, we need to discuss about potential uh, failure on some of the projects because nothing, nothing is is, uh, is linear. Nothing is guaranteed success, and in Web three, it's even it's even worse, as you know. Um, and the difference between an amazing project and a, and a project that doesn't make it is you like the difference is is so so little, uh, and the consequences are so big. And in Web3, everything is expo- it's exponential. Like everything that happens in Web2, in Web3, it's exponential. So if it goes well, yes, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. But if it goes badly, uh, it's, it's very bad. So, um, so I think that the, 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 the capital is going to be a huge responsibility for us. But we are ready. Uh, we were born to, to, to do it, to, to be successful. So I think it's the it's the it, it was really the next step for us. It's the ultimate goal, and it's really the time for us to 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 show the world, uh, not just the, the web free community, that uh, we are ready to we are ready to take this step and uh, and to be successful. About the projects we are going to invest, um, again, it has a lot to do also with our accelerator mentality. Uh, we want good projects, obviously. We want hard tech infrastructure. Uh, because uh, Web3 has suffered a lot um, from, uh, from having these projects that obviously get people a lot of, a lot of money, but don't really involve like the space. So I'm talking about the Dogecoins, the Pepe, like all of that. It's funny. I'm not going to lie. It's cool. It's funny. But is it really going to change the world? Is, are we going to talk about this in 50, in 50 years saying Dogecoin saved lives, Dogecoins made our life easier, Pepe made our uh, children or grandchildren's life uh, easier or better? No, absolutely not. So what we want to do is to invest in projects that in 50 years we're going to say, okay, this kind of product made our life better. They made our children or grandchildren's life better. So we want to be on the edge of technology, hard tech infrastructure, which are, which are three big words. But in essence, what it is, is really changing the world, changing, the, the, changing web free, changing blockchain, taking it to a, um, another level and making uh, people's life better, people's life easier with it, which is some, something that happened throughout the years. Uh, computers, they made our life better and easier. Internet did that. Social media, even though there are some problems, as we know, and big ones, but at the end of the day, it made our life easier. I remember the webcam. Uh, uh, 
my family thankfully were one of the first like in Portugal to have webcams and it was amazing because my dad was working uh, in France at the time and I just remember like that it was completely crazy. I could see my dad every day even though he was almost uh, 2,000 kilometers away and I'm sure that the guys that uh, did all like that that project about the, I don't remember the brand and I'm sorry about that but the those guys maybe they maybe they didn't have a podcast but maybe they talked to somebody like you Alexandra and they said look we want to change the world and we know that we were going to change the world for somebody and they changed the world for me so with that webcam and so yeah I just want I to think Logitech some... was one of the first ones yeah Logitech exactly Logitech was one of the first ones so congrats on them uh, so yeah, we want to be the next Logitech. <laughs> we want to we want to make it happen, and we and uh, I I just hope that somebody in twenty or thirty years will say uh, thanks to guys like Masterblocks. We we uh, we have this now that makes our life better and easier. So easier. So yeah, I mean that's the ultimate goal. So basically, you think like hard tech will be the new sexy thing in Web three? Yes. I'm I'm a hundred percent sure, and uh, I'm also a hundred percent sure that it's the thing that will push a lot of Web two money into Web three because the next, obviously, as we know, the the, the bull market in Web three is is two hundred percent caused by Web two money and people that that just flood uh, the Web three market with Web two money, and right now the people in Web two are still a bit skeptical because of these doge coins and pepes and projects that can really make you a lot of money but also make you lose a lot of money and don't really take us and makes our life better or easier uh, and so if we can manage to to really change the topic show that we are in the same boat to make life better for everybody i think that we can really be flooded with web2 money and and so have better chances and better funding to to create that new uh, technology Something else I wanted to ask you was regarding brand awareness, because I think you guys have done an amazing job, like establishing yourself on the market compared to like other uh, pro um, agencies. Um, but at the same time, I think you've no also noticed quite a lot of companies and like how they have like established themselves um, from the beginning, maybe. What do you think helped you become a reference point amongst these companies? Mm -hmm. I think that the the most important thing that we did was that we are uh, super transparent uh, people. So sorry. So I, I people that know us and people that get to know us, they know that when we promise something, it's because we can really do it, which is something <laughs> these days that is extremely hard to find. Second of all, they know that uh, we are always going to say the truth, even though the truth hurts and it hurts a lot. And we have many projects. Uh, they, they ask us for, for our DD. And when we are doing the DD, at the end of the day, we say, guys, look, you guys are amazing people, but the project is not good enough. Uh, and so we cannot work with you guys. But if you guys can manage to do this and this and this, Maybe, maybe there's going to be a second chance with us. So I think we understood that, and it has a lot to do also with in individuals that are at Masterblocks. It's all real, like good, genuine people. Uh, and we are famous for that. And we, we never really tried to, to, to grow too fast. Obviously, we want to go hard and fast. And, and we always put, put uh, um, velocity on what we do. But we want to do it well, and we, we don't want to like go on top of anybody uh, and be disrespectful for 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 people. And so people know us uh, in the industry for this, for being hard workers, good backgrounds, um, just complete killers on on uh, on on doing good business and and being genuine people. Uh, and so I think at the end of the day, that's what made us made us famous. Obviously, the, the growth hacking also the technique also helped. But I think we would we would have found uh, another thing that would stand out, and then uh, the, the the personality and and the, the people behind the project would would, would take would take it uh, further. Um, you are the head of partnerships. What are some partnerships you're developing, and how are you choosing your partners? Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, so yeah, I can tell you my about my latest uh, travel. I was uh, we have a, a very good bond, obviously, with uh, with Brazil because of uh, of Portugal. Brazil being an ex Portuguese colony, and we speak the same language. Uh, so uh, we understood very quickly that us as an accelerator and even as a VC, we're going to to focus a lot on not just Europe but also LATAM because we think that uh, uh, obviously we can make a difference in Europe, but there there are also good VCs in Europe. Uh, and so if we want to stand out, we need to to search for other markets when where we can really make a difference. And LATAM and uh, and South America in general is is really one of them. And so when I was there, I was in, uh, in the Eat Buenos Aires in Argentina, and I was uh, very surprised by, by the quality of the projects they have there and how much they do with, with low money. It's crazy. And I think that Argentinian projects in Web3 are, are uh, like one of the best examples of what Web3 should be. It's not people like trying to get millions of funding for just crazy valuations and then uh, like really producing almost nothing with lots of money. And Argentinian projects, not all of them, obviously, but the ones I got to be in touch with, they do a lot with low money. Like every time they, they can gather some money, they just do a lot. They produce a lot. And then you, you, it really gives you confidence knowing that these guys, if you give, me, if you give them a bit more, they're always going to produce more and more and give you more. So I was really surprised with, with, with that kind of project. Um, so yeah, about, about the partnerships, um, uh, I just want to get in touch with, with, the, with the, the best projects uh, where, where I'm in. So I was in Argentina and then I was in, in Sao Paulo, in Brazil. Uh, I want to know the best projects. I, know the, I want to know the people behind those projects. I want to talk to them about, obviously, the project, but also about all topics in life, you know, because... If you, if you get a strong relationship uh, with somebody and if you, you understand the, the, their life outside of Web3, the, the chances of you trusting that person in the end or their project is going really to, to grow. So um, I really try, uh, and I think I'm good at that, or people say I'm good at it, which is really to, to, to get into touch with, with those persons and see if they're good, if they are not good, if they have this will to go forward and to be successful. And so at the end of the day, the partnerships I try to do are with those people, the people that have the same mentality as we do at Masterblocks. Uh, when they have that killer instinct, that killer vibe to really do it, uh, they are the ones I, I look forward to, to have a partnership with. Fair. So now that we're kind of um, getting close to the end of this episode, can you share any Web3 tools that you would like anybody to know or use or any kind of resources that you have found useful? Um, I, was, I was about to say like, change your life, but I think maybe that's a bit much. Uh, but yeah. what, what, are, what are some examples that you, you would like to give um, to, to our audience? Yes, uh, for for uh, somebody working as head of partnership or just Web three in general, Web three in general, head of partnerships, okay. whatever you think is best, or like whatever yeah. you like best. Mm -hmm. So the things I I found and we found in at Masterworks to to really be good is you really have you really want to have an easy platform to um, to follow everything that is happening at the company, like a CRM. Uh, because uh, in Web3, life in general, but in Web3, it happens a lot. Sometimes you have 12 calls during the day, and at the end of the day, you need to do the, the, the follow-up of 12 calls, and then from those 12 calls, two guys were not there, one of the guys said he would go later, he didn't go, and so at the end of the day, you're, you're trying to do the follow-up, then you don't remember what, what was the conversation again, so you, you jump into the, the, the transcript uh, device or, and, and so you lose lots of time. And sometimes when you go to sleep, you go to sleep and you missed one of the conversations. And then you talked about one conversation that didn't happen. So having a platform that really does this, uh, do this for you, like where it's easy, like just you put the, the name, you, you, you say what happened, like easy. What's the next steps when you should contact the person again. I mean, having this kind of platform, which we have at Masterblocks, thankfully, 
and thanks to everybody that works at Masterblocks, mainly Leonardo, our our CEO. Uh, it makes our life like super easy and and it gives us more time during uh, the day to to do other important uh, things. The the second thing that really helps a lot also, but this is more on a, on a, on the head of partnership page is when I'm traveling and meeting all these people, like sometimes it's like 50, 100 people a day, which is a lot. Uh, there's no chance you're going to remember every every person, every discussion. So what you want to do is uh, you want to, for the top people, the, the, the people you really want to, to get in touch later on or when you, you go back home, uh, just write somewhere, it can be on, on the notes on your iPhone, uh, just two or three words about the person. Uh, top guy, accelerator, or uh, great project, VC, connections, Europe, US, something like that. Just quick words that, that uh, obviously, if you talk about that person, it's, you want to contact that person again, but just some small words that uh, are going to help your memory uh, to, 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 and also to do the right intro because something that is very important, uh, uh, like from, for me, uh, is really to, to make the person comfortable when I'm talking to that person to, to see if there's possible so that they trust me, you know, with our acceleration or they trust us with our growth hacking uh, packs. And so having the right intro, if I just do an intro with you, Alexandra saying, Hey, Alexandra, how are you? It's one thing. If I say, hey, Alexandra, how's life in Bucharest? Uh, is it snowing again in Romania? Or, wow, I, I saw that Romania did well at the, the World Cup. Or I saw that George Aji was drunk in a boat the other day. So, like, it's, it's, you see, you're, you're laughing already. So it's completely different, the approach. And so remembering these small things can really make the difference. Uh, on on letting somebody to be comfortable with you, you know, and trusting you. <laughs> yeah. What is, what is the CRM you guys are using? Is it like anything like Web three related, or is it like a normal CRM like from Web two? It's so this is free free ad. <laughs> we use Notion. Uh, okay. And then yeah, we use Notion, and then uh, yeah, we did some some we reworked our Notion completely in order uh, to 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 for it to be like more precise and easier to to introduce the the, the info and also to do the follow back and uh, and so now it's it's extremely good but yeah we're always like trying to do uh, more stuff maybe like the last thing i could i could add here is that it's very important to um it's very important like on telegram to uh to know exactly the right timing to uh, to answer or to send a DM to somebody. Because uh, sometimes you, so for instance, we are still finishing all the, all the details about our capital. And so there's some people that I haven't contacted yet, but I would love, but I'm still like waiting for us to have the, the VC uh, completely like solved to contact them. And another thing is that sometimes you, you, you're talking with somebody, they, they tell you, they give you an info and you know automatically that you can connect, you can do a small connection. So what you do is you keep the message there. You, you, you're not like you do the stuff you're trying to do and then you come back because sometimes you, you forget the name, you don't know where it is. So again, it's really a job of, of uh, filtering very well and uh, making your life easier for the followbacks. Something I really liked was the fact that uh, in at ETC everybody was taking a photo and then like writing what what yeah. what they spoke about. So it's, so it's exactly to your point that um, at least like you remember what you take that person from. Otherwise, like uh, in Avalanche Summit, everybody was just scanning telegrams and like they would just leave and like then you were like, who, who are you? What did we speak about? Did we even speak or we just scan telegrams? Um, sure, so sure. I think, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Taking a photo is cool. Um, uh, but uh, like in other, I would say that six months ago, I would do that all the time. But then I got a bit tired of doing that. So just writing two or three words and that's it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, photos works extremely good. It worked very well for me in the past and some people just love it. Some people write absolutely nothing. They just take the photo 
and because they have i don't know how to say in english but uh memory photographic memory yeah they yeah they 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 do remember like all a full conversation just from looking at the person <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, i think like i'm one of those people so for me like photos work quite well um cool. so before we wrap this up where can people find you so they can find me pretty much everywhere because <laughs> i'm everywhere <laughs> Uh, I mean, they can, they can, uh, obviously, uh, ping me on, on Telegram. They can follow me on Twitter. Uh, they can, uh, but I mean, if you go to the best conferences in the world, uh, I will be there. I'm not going to Singapore. Uh, and I was not in Korea because I, I was, uh, I just came back from two weeks in, in South America, but, uh, some people are going to be there. Our general partner is going to be in, uh, in Singapore at Token 2049. Then we're going to be uh, we're going to be in New York, Masari Mainnet. Uh, we're yeah, we're going pretty much. Everywhere. We're going to be in Barcelona, in Berlin, in Istanbul, uh, and then it starts again. We're going to be in Austin. So yeah, I mean every good conference there, there's there there's me or there's somebody from Masterbox for sure. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for this conversation. It's been great. Uh, and I'm looking forward uh, to speaking to you again, maybe like after you guys like launch your VC and tell me more about like how, how that is going uh, and yeah, like what are the trends sure. you're seeing. Sure, sure. And also just doing the comparison of what I what I told you now and after some some experience with the with running the VC, I think that w- that could be sweet. So what exactly. happened, Alex? What happened? What, what's happening? What changed? That could yeah, be cool. for sure. Uh, well, thank you so much again. Hope you have a lovely day and chat soon. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>